if you want it doing properly. Okay, and welcome back. Now this one is kind of related to the first, but it highlights another thing that I always watch out for. In a different organization, one of my team had multiple piles of A4 printouts on her desk. I think they call that letter size in the USA. And during the course of the day, between phone calls and other routine tasks, she was checking through them, assembling different combinations, stapling them together, then adding each to other different piles. By mid-afternoon, she had four piles of perfectly assembled documents, each with a post-it note on top. Interesting. I had to ask, what's that then? She told me that for one of the highly specialised product ranges that we sold, each of the specific lines required a specific pack accompanying each order. OK, why are you doing that? I asked her. She said that she wasn't actually doing it. She was checking and correcting the packs that the sales support team responsible for that range had done. Now, to make sure that the right combination of documents accompanied the right products. OK. That done, she returned the checked work to the team and the process moved on. Now, before this process was introduced, the company had suffered a string of customer complaints for incorrect documentation. So, we were in agreement that upsetting your customer is not a desirable thing to do check. We also agreed that the existing process was failing. Check. What we didn't agree on was the solution or the home of that solution. Now I spent a lot of time in completely different industries, one of which was automotive. Now there I was fortunate enough to work with some of the sharpest minds I have ever known. In particular a guy named Alex, real name, who was an expert in the field of lean manufacturing and he set me on a path of discovery that became part of my life as well as my career. Now don't be thrown by the word manufacturing in the title as lean principles can be used in other industries outside of manufacturing and indeed in life in general. Now I may develop a course on lean but for now the lesson here relates to muda. Muda is the Japanese word for waste. In lean manufacturing terminology, specifically the seven deadly wastes or mudders. And here they are. Waiting, overproduction, rejects, motion, processing, inventory, transport. Now you'll notice that these conveniently spell out the mnemonic worm pit. And we'll touch on a few of these as we go through the course, but the one we're interested in here is rejects. Now, when you manufacture a product, the cost of manufacture is made, of the, made up of the cost of materials and the cost of the production, including all the other support costs. So if you sell a part for $3 and it contains $1 worth of raw materials and it costs $1 to produce, labour, machine time, packaging, distribution, marketing, everything else, you will make $1 in profit. Cool. But if you don't get that right the first time, your $1 profit erodes. Outright rejects lead to 150% loss. For each part you make, you spend your $1 on materials and your $1 on all the other associated costs and you should get $1 in profit. If you end up scrapping it, you throw all three of those dollars in the bin. Not cool. If, after manufacture, you need to check your work, there is an associated cost with that, which in this case was the cost of the time of one of my team. So, even if it turns out to be okay, that extra cost still exists because the production process, the work of the sales support team, was so unreliable that a 100% inspection needed to be carried out. If we found something wrong, we then had to correct the mistake, which obviously costs more time and possibly more in materials if if we had to scrap some part of the item and replace it with the correct part. You can see how this is wasteful, right? Now on top of this, we also added another waste twice. Transport. The packs were produced in a different building. 
so in the morning someone would walk from one building to the other to bring the work to be checked and mid-afternoon someone would transport it back. Now the challenge was to eliminate those two mudders, those two wastes and there were two questions. How was it that when we checked the work we knew how to get it right? And the second question was how was it that the original production team, the sales support team, didn't? I just know through experience it's really easy if you know what you're doing was the answer. Now that's an answer but that's not a great answer and here's why. If you rely on expertise that resides in one person you are wholly reliant on that one person. What happens if they're on holiday or leave the business? The world stops, you're in trouble. So I asked if it would be possible for her to describe her process, her experience, her methodology and create a set of instructions using a set of rules that could be applied on a single side of paper. The idea being that someone with zero experience, me in the first instance, could pick it up and do it correctly and she said yes. She did it and we tested it on me and with a couple of other folks in the office. Mission one accomplished. The how. Next came the who. Now she arranged a meeting with the sales team and scheduled a 15 minute training session where she would take them through her process using the easy to follow instructions she had created. She agreed she would continue to check the work for the first couple of batches to ensure that her instructions were clear and that the output was correct, good units coming off the line. And that was that. Though it didn't eat a huge block of her time, it ate a lot of little bites and now she had that time back. Sure, an investment of a few hours were, in, were required but the payback period was short and I'll, I'll elaborate on that on that last part as it's very important. Now a lot of the time things don't get changed because the perceived time to improve a situation or the amount of work perceived to change that situation is just too great. But here it's important that we always do the math and then conclude whether the return on investment is worth it and it's generally pretty simple to do. If you lose five minutes a day to a particular task and with 20 hours of dedicated hard work you could eliminate it, would you do it? Well, probably not. At five minutes a day it would take you 12 working days to get even one hour back. 20 hours, that's 240 days. Bad return on investment. But if you spent half an hour a day on something and five hours of work would eliminate it, would you do it then? Well, of course you would. That you would be no better off for the first couple of weeks, but after that it's all cream. Anyway, Let's take a look at another one.